Hey, what up guys? Welcome back to another quick Flutter tutorial. The widget of today is going to be a list view and by extension, I'm going to go over the list view builder as well and in which context each one would be suitable in. So I've got here a blank scaffold with nothing inside. So in there, let's put in a column which is what I covered in the last video. And I'm just gonna show you a problem that you'll run into when you use columns and rows. So inside the column, let's just create a basic container of height 200 and let's just give it a color as well. Now in columns, we can have multiple widgets inside, right? Now the problem that you'll face is when the column becomes full, you're gonna have this overflow error. This is a situation where it will be appropriate to use a list view. And the other crucial feature of a list view is that it's scrollable. You can imagine a lot of apps are going to want to have a scrollable list. You can also specify this physics property to be never scrollable if you want. But most of the time, I would want this to be a scrollable list. So let's just get rid of that one. Now, on a very basic level, this is how you use a list view. But just to show you a couple of good coding practices, when you have a lot of widgets in the children, one of the things that you should be getting into the practice of doing is to encapsulate the code to make it cleaner. So what that means is I'm going to just create another file in our library and let's call it just square dot dot and I'm going to import my material dot dot file and let's just create a separate widget here and let's just call it my square. Then we can paste what we coded up earlier into this separate file. So this way we can encapsulate the code and it will make it much more cleaner. So instead of all of this repetition, let's get rid of this and now we can just create my square. And if you, do, if you need to make any changes to this square, then you can just do it in the square.dart file. So now we can have five squares here. It makes it much more easier to look at. Now, a basic list view is appropriate when you know what you want to store in that list. But in practice, you might not know exactly how many objects to place in there. So for example, if you think about like an Instagram feed, it's never a fixed number of posts that you have. Like if you keep scrolling, it creates more, right? So in that case, we want to be able to dynamically create this list. So just to illustrate this, I'm gonna create a separate list and let's just call it posts. And so in this list, let's just create a few strings. I'm just gonna call it post one, post two, post three and so on. So once you have this list, then what we can do is instead of just creating a basic list view, you can create a list view dot builder, which basically builds the list dynamically. So what that means is in this item builder, if we just give it a current context and an index and let's return the square now. Now, when you use builders, you have to specify the item count. So this is going to be how many items that you want to create. Now, obviously you can just give it a fixed number like three or one and it'll create that many of those squares. But what's really useful about this is for the item count, you don't have to specify a fixed number. You can say just however long the post list is. Okay, so post.length. So this way, it's gonna automatically be, in this case, three. But if I add more to our posts, the length would become four. So this way we can dynamically create our list. And just to take this a step further, in the square, we can also give it a child. And so let's pass through a parameter and create the constructor for this parameter. And specifically, I actually want a string to be passed through. So let's require a string and let's display it as a text widget. So you can see now in the my square, it's got a red squiggle because it's gonna require us to provide a child. And the child I wanna provide is the post at whichever index I am at currently. Here, let's actually center this widget so you guys can see it properly. And maybe let's get the font to be a little bigger. But you can see how we would use a list view builder. And by the way, this sort of philosophy of coding is called object-oriented programming. So that's what I'm showing you here. And just to make it a little bit more practical, I'm going to create a very basic layout for the Instagram UI. Because in that UI, it uses vertical scrolling for the posts and also has horizontal scrolling for the stories. So I'm going to illustrate how we can use list views for a UI like Instagram. Now I'm going to wrap the list view in a column so that I can have the stories on the top and the posts on the bottom. And if I just show you this error, you can see it says the render box was not laid out. So what that means is when you have a list view, you have to specify a height for the list view to, to fill up. A couple ways you can do this. So on a very basic level, you can just wrap it in a container and specify a height for it. So let's say like give it a height of 300. And so that's where your list view will belong. 
But what's more useful than specifying a fixed height is you can wrap it in a expanded widget, which is also one of the widgets I covered in the last couple of videos. And so you know that if you put an expanded widget inside a column, it's just gonna fill up the entire space. So this is gonna be our posts. And above this, let's create our stories. So for the stories, Again, firstly, I'm going to show you the naive way you would go about doing this, which is to use a row and we'll see the problems that we'll run into. If I just create a little container here that, and make it pink, let's make it a circle as well. Since the stories are all round, whoops, you should specify the color inside the decoration. So if you place enough of these, you're going to get to a point where you run out of space. So it's going to have a bit of overflow there, as you can see. So again, this is when we would use a list view. Oop, and this is the error that we ran into earlier. We have to give it a specified height. So if I just wrap this in an expanded widget, this should take care of the problem. Now, if I just save this, it's going to be vertical scrolling by default. And as I said, by default, it's going to be a vertical scroll. So you can actually specify under the list view, the scroll direction to be horizontal. And so that's what we want for our stories. And just to clean up our code a little bit, let's encapsulate our circles into a separate file, just like we did with a square. And let's grab one of these circles. So instead of having all of this code repeating, let's just grab one of these and separate it out. Now we can delete all of this. And let's create a list view builder. And we're going to return my circles or my circle rather. And make sure that all of these are imported at the top. And we need to specify the item count as well as the scroll direction. We wanted to make that horizontal. So for the item count, instead of specifying a fixed number like three, we can treat it like the same as what we did for the posts. So let's create another list and call it stories this time. And let's have a few stories in there. So story one, story two, three, and maybe let's create another one, story five. Cool, so now we can just dynamically create it. And for the item count, we can just say stories.length. This way our code becomes very nice and usable. And just so that we can see exactly what's happening, let's give the stories a child so that we can pass through from our home page. So this is just the same thing as what we did for the posts. Cool, so now we can pass through our child to our circle. We should actually center this text widget and there it is cool and just to make it more realistic the last thing i'll do is if you use two expanded widgets that's a ratio of one to one so that's why the screen's split into halves so i actually want the bottom to be an expanded widget because i want that to fill up the rest of the space whereas i want the top section to be a little smaller right so a couple of ways we could do this you could change the flex property for the second expanded widget to make it much bigger but what i recommend is instead of using flex in this situation just leave the second one as an expanded widget and the first one Instead of using an expanded here, just give it a fixed height. So let's wrap it into a container and the height, let's say 150. And then the second widget is just going to fill up the rest of the space. So I think this is more appropriate in this case. So this is pretty much everything you need to know for how to use list views as well as list view builders. And just to sum up, it's almost an extension of rows and columns, except for the fact that you can now scroll through. Okay, so columns and rows, you can't actually scroll. So hopefully that was clear enough and you guys understood how to use not just a list view but also a list view builder which is extremely helpful if you can understand how to use the builder. Now if you're interested in how to make the full Instagram UI I actually made a video for that as well so check it out. But other than that that's it for this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Laters!